Hello everyone, welcome to the Daily Sip. My name is Oliver, my mission is to bring you closer to organic Japanese green tea. And today we're gonna dive into the next session of our mega sampler uh, collection here, 28 teas. And today we're gonna dive into a next leaf tea. And today I have a very special one for you. And this one is the most expensive tea of Mr. Kuwaji. So um, this is the Kazugain Golden Sencha Green Tea. And this actually is a green tea which is made from the Yabukita cultivar. Yabukita, if you know a little bit Japanese green tea and if you have already a little bit dived or dove into the world of Japanese green tea, normally Yabukita is a tea which you find often especially in the region of Shizuoka, which is the biggest uh, green tea region or green tea production region in Japan. There you find Yabukita up to 95% because it is a frost resistant crossbreed which was created just after the Second World War. But here we talk about the south. So uh, Mr. Kawaji has actually his farm in uh, Kagoshima, in the region of Kagoshima at uh, around uh, sea level or above uh, sea level, above 250 meters above sea, sea level. And this is where he plants. And this is actually a tea which he creates very, very, very fine. And um, what is special about this tea is on the one hand, it is a futsumushi, so on the, it's a middle steamed tea. Here um, uh, in Japan, normally you talk about Asamushi, which is lightly steamed, or Fukamushi, but this one is an in-between. So what you can see as well with the needle shapes, they are a little bit, a little bit finer, but still you have quite long um, needles and a long ones like this one here. So we have quite um, a long ones as well with this one here. Typical for a futsumushi or for a tea which is not done in the fukamushi style. What is also important about this tea, it is a long shaded sencha. When we talk about shading, you can do this quite short, about four to five to six days. And then as soon as you go above seven days, then you enter the territory of uh, also Kabuse Sencha. So um, Kabuse, which is the nylon net, which is used nowadays to cover uh, the tea plants, just to uh, cut off the sunlight to inhibit the transition from uh, the theanine to the catechin. So from a more sweeter umami rich plant into a more of an astringent or more citrusy tasting tea plant. So this one here is shaded for 10 days, so it's a long shaded sencha, and it is also, as I said before, his um, longest shaded and also his most expensive um, sencha. We have in assortment from him. He has very nice Fukamushi senchas as well, for example, the Azatsuyu or the Murasaki, but here we're really talking about a typical sencha from the Yabukita cultivar. So I'm expecting a tea which is quite broad in its taste spectrum. Thanks to its long shading, I expect it to a little bit be more in the direction of a sweeter and a smoother tea, so less citrusy note. And I will also brew this tea at a lower temperature, so I preheated the water to 60 degrees Celsius. Good, my last sip of water, and then we can start. So what we're using is um, uh, the, the typical Sencha sample which we have, so 5 gram we have in this one here, it's 1.76 ounces, so we just um, gonna use today, I'm using uh, a full uh, or round strainer teapot, so um, this is one teapot um, I like to use. Um, I'm not kind of a opponent, some people are opponents of uh, the metal strainer. I actually like when you can give the tea quite a lot of space, so um, that's why I personally like also the full metal strainer all around teapot. Some people say as well that the metal strainer um, is actually uh, giving a little bit more, sometimes a little bit more of an astringent taste to the tea due to the fact that the fine mesh can actually um, keep still a little bit of tea and so you're mixing different teas together. But uh, I never had this experience so I like to use a metal strainer. 
With the Accenture, normally important as always, one minute of ruin. Here we have now the six degrees Celsius, so we're 140 Fahrenheit, and we're just gonna give it a little bit more than a minute just to brew properly the first brewing. The first brewing is the most important, just to open up the leaves, um, try to um, give it a little bit more time, but when you go to the second or the third brewing, you can easily go down to 20 seconds. Even 15 seconds is enough because the tea leaves are open and then they will show, um, they will give their taste quite easily and quite fast. So this is absolutely no problem um, in the second and third brewing, but in the first brewing, as I said. Give it a little bit more time. Let maybe have a short smell of the leaves. Mm -hmm. It's quite grassy. I get a little bit of mango, a little bit of papaya taste. So now let's try this. one minute 60 degrees so you see this beautiful golden color this is the main difference between the deep steamed or so-called fukamushi style team tea is actually that you have here a more of a golden and finer color a little bit more of a shine through so you can see the finger behind which when you have a fukamushi so deep steam tea which gives more of a it's chlorophyll color more of a tense green color there you often have already in the first brewing quite a green and in the intense color but let's have a smell of the leaves so first give you a quick view so you can see they also become a little bit golden very beautiful first we had a dark dark very intense color but here what we can see is that the tea actually starts to go into the direction of a nice a little bit of a light to green giving the color as well to the water so I definitely get uh, some sweet corn I get a little bit of a apricot, even in the direction of stone fruits, a little bit of peaches. So a sign that this tea will be very sweet and very fine in its taste. So now I'm curious to taste it. Mm. Wow. It's a very light, very soft tasting tea. Mm. It's very creamy, kind of a, a little bit more of a denser liquor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You really get this sweetness. I get, but it's a very light sweetness, a softness to it. And then you get a little bit of this kind of stone fruit. I got more a little bit the direction of apricots than peaches. Mm. But wonderfully soft. It's a wonderful soft tea. I have no citrus, so normally with the Yabukita you get a little bit of a citrusy flavor profile, but with this tea here I don't have it at all. Mm -hmm. So it stays a soft, sweet, round, apricotty, maybe a little bit of mango, but it doesn't move too much. So what I like about the apricot taste when you get it with green tea is that it, it is kind of a soft sweetness, a light sweetness, not too pushy. Sometimes when you go, uh, for example, with a fukamushi, you can get this strong mango pineapple sweetness, which is quite dominant. With this tea, it's a very fine, very, very, very soft. So this is typical also for Yabukita. It is a tea which can get quite umami rich, quite strong and kind of it's uh, a little bit sweet corn or sweet taste. But in comparison to other cultivars, it seems to me that it's still kind of soft on the sweetness. So it's not too overwhelming the sweetness. It's not too strong in the umami flavor either. This tea 
shows a little bit of umami, but it's not too strong. So um, I must uh, say it's a very nice and very soft and very beautiful tea. At least for the first brewing, but now I'm curious. Yabukita is known to show a little bit more of a citrusy uh, flavor. Um, so it can get a little bit astringent. So now I'm curious, I'm holding a uh, still the temperature down at 6 degrees Celsius, 140 degrees Fahrenheit, just um, to brew it very soft, to not get out the astringency, but I'm curious now for the second brewing in which direction this tea will evolve. So you see very short brewing, 20 seconds. Wow, we see as well that the color really intensifies. It nearly goes a little bit into this more green, but still st stays nicely golden, but we get it definitely a more greener. Leaves similar than the first brewing, bigger now, clearly the leaves open up now. So we have a beautiful, beautiful kind of um, nearly yellowish uh, green. And now I'm curious to see how this tea It shows a little bit more of citrusy flavor. So now the, it seems that the catechins, oh, it also gets more refreshing. So the catechins, they bring a little bit of fresher tones now with the second brewing and the third brewing. This is beautiful also when you go from one brewing to another, how the differences, even I use the same parameters than before, then the tea can really evolve. Here we had the first brewing of smooth sweetness, lightness, a little bit of sweet corn, a lot of apricot, but um, uh, very smooth and, and light. Now in the second brewing, definitely more going into a direction of a kind of a beautiful um, refreshing. So there's a fresher note adding itself to the tea. Um, we still have a nice sweet corn taste, but we definitely have more of a little bit of lemon, lime juice, um, kind of uh, freshness adding itself to uh, the tea itself. So here we definitely moving more into the direction. So also Yabukita showing a lot of broad taste spectrum also from brewing to brewing. And here we definitely also have it with this tea but still stays smooth, still stays nice, and it doesn't drift off very much into the astringent. It just gives, adds, adds itself a little bit of a fresh, a little bit of a tasty kind of taste note, um, bringing, freshening up the experience of the second brewing. And, but now I'm curious how the third will be. Still the 60 degrees. And we go back a little bit to a lighter color. So expect it to be a little bit more smooth. And now the tea leaves, you see them, they're completely open now. Very nice. What you can uh, um, see over the different brewings that they open more and more and more. And now we have them fully expanded. What you can see here, so fully expanded leaf. And it's organic, you can eat it. So no problem here. And let's go to the third brewing. Mm. Yeah, the citrusy note or the citrusy note goes a little bit away. So we have again a nice smoothness. And this is unexpected for me that this tea turns now into a less kind of a I would, I would have thought that the kind of this fresh note or the astringency might intensify a little bit with the third brewing, not at all the case. Going back to a nice smoothness, very round, sweet taste. So here, um, again, the kind of smoother, more apricot tea, 
sweetness of this of these tea shows again. Mm -hmm. I got a little bit also of banana peel coming in. So in the first, in comparison to the first brewing, the first brewing was really kind of a sweet corn rich and also this nice smooth sweetness of the apricot. Here we got a little bit more of a sweeter sweetness. So I'm getting a little bit more of banana peel, for example. Also the apricot, but it is kind of nicely balanced with the sweetness of the banana peel. So this is what I get here much more. It kind of shifts more into a, a stronger sweetness and I have less of the umami, less of the sweet corn with the tea. So um, this is, this is. Yeah, this is definitely the sweetest brewing of all three of them, really giving the tea more of a kind of a stronger sweetness. Good, so this is this. I hope you liked it. And if you ever have a question, please feel free to leave a comment. I'm happy to answer any questions. And uh, I guess I see you soon. Thank you for watching. See you and bye bye.